Hi, Doc. So, come and watch me work on a client. So, this client's coming back for an infill. Um, and we're going to remove any of the 3D work. And when I say we, I mean me, because obviously nobody else is doing this for me. I wish. And I'm going to use the pink ceramic bit to remove the gel polish and then just gently blend in the acrylic. So I'm using very little pressure at this point because I am around the natural nail. And then you can afford to, you know, apply a little bit more pressure when you're taking off the gel polish. But with your bits, what you want to do is make sure that you don't apply loads of pressure. If you're having to apply loads of pressure, then your bit might be dull. And the lovely thing about the pink ceramic bit is it's got a pink, gorgeous ceramic barrel and a Swarovski crystal at the top. So I'm going to do the cuticle prep where I'm using the cuticle bit. So you'll notice it's shaped like, um, like a rugby ball, kind of, you know, or a, I think a rugby ball and a um, American football are the same shape. I'm sure people will tell me that they are not. Um, but that's what I'm using for that. And then I'm going to go in and trim any non-living tissue that doesn't come off in that prep process. Now, you'll notice that I use the curved scissors around the cuticle, but I use the nippers down the side wall of the nail. Then I'm going to take my sanding band. This is a 240 grit sanding band. It's our fine sanding band. Um, it's purple and made from ceramic. I'm going to blend in any acrylic. You'll notice that this one had a little bit of pocketing and lifting, so I have obliterated that without obliterating the natural nail underneath. So I'm just going to blend that in and I'm also prepping the natural nail. So I'm blending the product that's already on the nail, but I am prepping the natural nail as well. Then we're going to go in with the primer. So you make sure all of the nail is clean. So I would have wiped over with cleanup solution, then I go in with a primer and then we can go on with the acrylic. And I'm just using a natural acrylic here. And you can see that it's not a massive bead, but it's not a tiny bead, but it's perfect for rebalancing the nail. And when I say that, I mean, we're going to rebalance it because, yes, we're adding strength at the back, but we're also going to add strength at the apex as well. So I'm using the Mr. Buttons brush for this. So we're going to do this on all the nails and make that structure sound. It's kind of like, you know, on a house, if you remove a wall in the house, and especially if it's a structural wall, then the, the, the wall, you know, the house might fall down. And that's what will happen. Say if I blended these in and I didn't even put no more acrylic on and I just put gel polish on, then, yeah, that's not going to be good. So we're filling these to make sure the structure of the nail is sound. The reason that I use the Mr. Buttons brush is because it's a perfect shape and size for doing infills. It's not too big, it's not too small. So I'm going to take a 150 grip file and I am going to file over. So you could use between a 150, you could use a 180 if you want to. Um, if you think you've got a lot of bulk there, you can use a 100 grit file. So you'll notice that the files have numbers on and those numbers are the grits of the file. So the lower the number, so 100 grit would be your most coarse file. And then the higher the number, so the 240 grit, then it's going to be a softer file. So get your application as neat as you can because it will save time when it comes to filing. And that's what I try my best to do because, yeah, filing hurts my shoulder and it's messy, there's dust everywhere, it takes time. So if you try your best to get that application as neat as possible, then it saves on filing time. So once it's filed and buffed, you're going to wipe over with cleanup solution just to make it nice and clean. And then we're going to go on with base coat because I'm doing a gel polish design. I want the base coat on there. So this is the base coat that matches our gel polish system. This is going to give you the best adhesion ever. 
oh my God, I love this colour so much. Not just because it's called Vegas Baby, but because look how bright it is. It's so pretty. It's so beautiful. And we're going to blend back with the fade brush, just creating that ombre. Then we're going to use Savage, which is another bright colour. Yeah, there's definitely a theme going on here. And then we've got Sham, which is another bright orange. And then we've got Ibiza, our bright neon yellow. Limelight is our neon green. And then I'm going to blend them back. And you'll notice now, because I'm going to do this super quick, I figured out that you can use, if you haven't got a fade brush, you can also use the Mr. Buttons brush to fade back. Make sure you're cleaning your brush in between. But when you've done this, make sure you um, also clean it in monomer after and leave the monomer back in the brush. Else it will dehydrate the brush and you don't want that. Then we're going to go on with Kurt. So this colour is named after my brother. It's grey. Now I love grey with neon. So I know people think, oh, well, grey is just really boring. And my brother's not really boring. But we thought it was really funny to call the grey Kurt. <laughs> But yeah, so we're going to do the same. We're going to put the grey on and we're going to blend that down, creating that gorgeous double ombre. And we're going to matte top coat these. I love a matte top coat because it just adds to the design, especially if you're adding artwork on top. Now, if you are adding artwork on top, you can put your matte top coat on do your design, then you can also glossy top coat it after. But by using a matte top coat as the base, your work, if you're doing line work or any freehand nail art, it will stick to the matte really well. And you'll find that your lines are a little bit neater, a little bit crisper. So I'm pop them in the lamp and cure those. And then I'm just going to gently buff over because I want even more grab. And now going on with Chewy. Chewy is a top coat, but it's also got all these flakes in. It's from our SFX range. So if you don't know what our SFX range is, we have two. We have volume one and volume two. And each one of those gel polish top coats has a different effect. So this has got all like the little bits of black in, those little, I mean, this would be good for Easter and things like that. I know Easter's gone. Do you know what I mean? But I do love these little speckledy bits over the top. And our SFX range actually comes in glossy and matte, which is pretty cool. So if you like, you know, a little bit of sparkle on top of your design, but you don't want to add a gel polish sparkle and then a top coat, you can use the colours from the, FS the SFX range, you know, add a little sparkle. So you can see this was the matte version and now I'm gonna line the outside of this design and we're using the lily liner brush and we're using the color void which is the blackest black it's so black it's so pigmented it's so easy to use when you're painting and you can see I've reloaded my brush because it was really dry but the pigment was still quite strong but I just want to make sure I've got a thin application. That's why I'm not using like loads on your brush. You don't need to like fully load this brush so it's dripping. You need the tiniest bit. You don't want to bulk it out too much either. Because obviously the more gel polish you put on, the more you're going to bulk out the nail. This is giving me 90s rave vibes. Head to the disco. I'm going to be there with my roller skates on. We need a roller skate disco malarkey with 80 songs. That's what this nail is giving me right now. So I'm going to do this on all of the nails. So again, not loads of product, just enough to coat those edges. Get the edges done first and then you can neaten up with a smaller brush. But the Lily Liner brush is going to give you the nice straight lines at the side. And then if you want more control, you can go to a shorter brush like the Cassidy Detailer or even the Messy Nessie is our smallest brush. I mean, it's tiny, the Messy Nessie is. So it's not like, you know, I, I should sit and count the hairs on it because I'm sure there's only about, you know, 
seven hairs. <laughs> and then now I'm going to do this filigree design on top. And I think it really does pop. It looks gorgeous. So you've got these. So these nails, you'll notice, haven't got the speckled effect. They haven't got the colour chewy top coat over the top. These are just the matte ones. So these have just got the matte top coat and they've got the ombre. So what we're doing is we're adding some finesse to this filigree. So you'll see you've got two different designs here. You've also got the speckly one that's got a framed sort of edge. And then we have got the filigree going on to the ones that have just got a double ombre. And when I say double ombre, I mean there's two colours. So um, you can do an ombre like a baby boomer, which has got just white blending into the natural pink of the nail. But this one's got, you know, it's got solid colours. You've got the yellow and the grey and you've got the orange and the grey. I hope I'm making sense because these voiceovers, when you, so I'm sat here in the studio watching the video on my laptop, talking through what I'm doing. It, it is definitely different than when I'm actually explaining while I do it. It's, I feel like I need some company because I've not got Adam here, you know what I mean? Throwing in his little comments, do you know what I mean? Or do I miss that? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I do do voiceovers with Adam in the room as well at times when we're together. Um, but um, he's not here today when I'm doing this this actual voiceover. Um, sometimes when I'm doing filigree, I just kind of like wing it. I have a shape. So you'll notice when I first started, I laid down like a sort of S shape. And then I let the filigree kind of grow from that S shape. I just kept adding until I was kind of happy with the balance of it. So again, we kind of start with this S shape. And we do these little curly wheelies. They're like a long comma kind of thing. But if you sort of start and you think, no, I don't like that. The joy is you can just wipe it off. Whereas if this was acrylic paint, it would dry very quickly. Whereas this isn't going to dry until we put it in the lamp, so we can keep adding to it. Or, you know, if we don't like it, we can take it off and start again. So we're going to glossy top coat these now. Make that one shiny. Oh, we go. We're making them all shiny now. They're all going to be shiny. Let's get the top coat on. I mean, looking back on them now, I think, oh, I feel like maybe I should have put matte over them too. Isn't it funny how you look back at your work and you like reevaluate it and think, I feel like I should have left maybe them ones matte. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I mean, for all I know, I could get to the end of this video and I haven't made them matte because I'm trying to remember what I've done. But it looks like we're getting glossy on all of the nails. If I remember rightly, if I remember rightly, these nails were done for Tina. Um... And if you follow us on Facebook, we've also got... So we've got the Kirsty Keen Nail Artist um, Facebook account. And then we've also got a... Like a community Facebook group, which is called Kirsty Keen Nails or something like that. I can't even remember. Maybe we'll put a link in this video because Tina is one of the moderators on that um, group. Um, so, yeah, she came, started coming for nails and was a client. And then we needed a bit of help on that page or group. And she was like, I'll do that. No drama. So thank you, Tina. love the color combos so there you are duck i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to check us out on facebook and instagram tiktok and all that malarkey and i will see you soon Ta -ra, duck.